I want to talk about the Kyle uh, Rittenhouse case and its widest implications. And in fact, this discussion that I initiate now, I'll be continuing tonight on Locals, a kind of uncensored Q&A live, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to check it out, go to dinesh.locals.com. It's, um, it's going to be lively. Now, the um, Rittenhouse case is in the hands of the jury. I make this podcast right about the time in the morning when the jury is beginning to deliberate. So I won't know the outcome, even if it comes today. And I'm not going to talk about the outcome per se. I'll take stock of that after it happens. What I want to talk about are the wider implications of the case. Now, there are a lot of people opining about these implications. Here is David French, the (laughs) never-Trumper, formerly of the National Review, now I think of an obscure publication called The Bulwark. Anyway, he goes, um, The movement to make a hero out of Kyle Rittenhouse is both ridiculous and dangerous. He was a foolish kid wielding a deadly weapon. Now, I've said before that if I was... Kyle Rittenhouse's mom or his dad, I would discourage him from doing this. So there's an element of me that agrees with French. But there's another side to it that I want to highlight. And that is that, um, you know, I'm a little offended by this tone from David French. I mean, I could almost retitle his article why, you know, I, David French, kind of sitting on my butt while Antifa thugs are burning down Kenosha, am morally superior to a lower middle class white teenager who rushed to defend a community where his dad and other family members lived. That's the other side of it. I mean, this Rittenhouse kid has guts. He has more guts than the prosecutor. The prosecutor himself said, I'd, I wouldn't go out there at that kind of hour. The, uh, the cops weren't there. Uh, at least they came, but they came much later. Much of the male population of Kenosha was cowering in fear, hiding in their homes while left-wing rioters are destroying the city. Who's Who's the real hero here? Well, a case can be made that the real hero is Kyle Rittenhouse. And, um, and the left is trying to demonize him, just as they tried, by the way, to demonize the McCloskeys when the McCloskeys came out of their home in St. Louis, uh, sort of guns drawn. Because they're trying to demonize all of us. They're trying to demonize the Second Amendment. They're trying to demonize the idea that you can allow, that you can use uh, force and, and guns to defend yourself when you are under direct assault, an assault that you did not start and you did not, in fact, provoke. So gun rights are very much on trial. And I say that because this is such an open and shut case of self-defense. In each of the three cases, Rittenhouse was directly attacked, and he was attacked in a manner that he had reason to fear would cause him deadly harm, if not death. So this is a clear-cut case. If you can't uh, vindicate self-defense here, where can you vindicate it? What's an easier case? It's really hard to hard to say. Now, um, the left's common refrain here is, uh, we can't have a vigilante justice. That's the lesson that they're drawing from this. And this is a lesson that, in a way, Jen Psaki echoed. The president wants to convey clearly that we can't have vigilantes. And, uh, of course, um, uh, on MSNBC, pretty much the same uh, message, um, uh, which is, uh, this is all vigilanteism. That's Don, Don Lemon. But um, I want to actually argue that vigilante justice arises out of the failure of normal justice. Uh, I just read a little item that says that 500 National Guardsmen are now in Kenosha in case of their riots over the verdict. I guess they are thinking it might be an acquittal, and so they need the National Guard. Well, if you had those 500 National Guardsmen before, you wouldn't have had the riots. And when you don't have law and order, when you've got people who are looting and marauding and burning your town and the cops are nowhere to be seen, what other form of justice is there other than vigilante justice? I think back to the Charles Bronson movies of the 1970s when New York, at least in the movie, was portrayed as absolutely the Wild West. Rape and murder and pillage occurring all over the place. And so the reason that we identify with Charles Bronson in those movies is because we recognize that vigilante justice may be a crude form of justice, but it is justice. It's the same thing that in the in the old Western movies, you have a kind of um, stranger who comes in from out of town, the kind of man with the gun. 
Uh, he becomes, in a sense, the uh, enforcer of justice now. Was he appointed sheriff? Was he elected by anybody? Who told him that he could enforce the law? But when there's lawlessness around, and the point here, and this is the key point, the left created this lawlessness. It sanctioned it. It signed off on it. It could easily have been stopped. And we see this when the prosecutor goes out there and calls Antifa a bunch of heroes. It's a crowd full of heroes. Think of what he's what he's saying. He's talking about criminals, pedophiles. He's talking about domestic abusers, terrible people, the absolute dregs of society. But see, the left loves these people. Why? Because they are doing the paramilitary bidding of the left. They are the colectivos of Venezuela. They are the brown shirts of the Nazis. They are the black shirts. Um, they are the black shirts of Mussolini. This is the left. They want it to be so that they can be marauding at their say-so and the rest of us just step back. They don't like Carl, Carl Rittenhouse because he said enough is enough. He drew his AR-15. That's what terrifies the left. They want. That's why they want to go after him. They're after the larger phenomenon of brave people defending themselves. And I think one of the lessons of Carl Rittenhouse is that if we see a mass breakdown of law and order, and if we see the left unleashing these paramilitaries on the street, we're going to need hundreds, if not thousands, of Kyle Rittenhouses. Just think about it. If it wasn't Kyle Rittenhouse alone, but if it was, let's just call it a kind of Rittenhouse committee, a sort of Rittenhouse squad, a hundred people with AR-15s in Kenosha, all marching together, I think the Antifa guys would have been stopped dead in their tracks. They would have been stopped by a citizen militia, a kind of Kyle Rittenhouse times 100. And this is really what gets the left all freaked out. Not because they're against violence. They want all the violence to come from their side. They don't want any kind of violence to stop their violence. That's why they don't want the cops on the scene. And that's why they don't want Kyle Rittenhouse.